Hi everyone, I'm Mike Deeb, uh, CSM here at Seekout, and I wanted to welcome you all to, uh, and thank you for attending this technical training session. Um, so I have a very brief PowerPoint that I'm gonna go through and then we'll dive right into the platform. All right, so the agenda for today is we're gonna do a very brief overview of Seekout and the different licenses that are available and which one includes the GitHub tech sourcing. We're gonna be spending most of our time going directly into the search capabilities, including searching by keywords, Boolean, filters, power filters, using those with diversity filters, and combining all of those together to create the perfect search to find just the right candidate for your jobs. Um, we're gonna be spending most of our time, or almost all of it, inside of the GitHub search. So if you log into your accounts, if you're an existing user, uh, you'll be able to see the difference between public and GitHub profiles here. And we'll be going over the, both the GitHub search and GitHub insights. Now, a very quick overview of uh, what we do here at Seekout. Um, what we try to provide all of our customers is a 360 degree view of candidates. Um, so if we look across the open web, there are things that candidates say on their public profiles, on their social media profiles, on LinkedIn. Um, these are things that we can actually go ahead and you know, go and read that information, see exactly what they say about themselves. Then there's things that Seekout can infer. So we'll, we'll look at things about a candidate's history, their work history, um, you know, to, to find out maybe they have an enhanced uh, security clearance. Um, for one example, we'll actually go and look at jobs for uh, cleared, you know, for, for jobs that require clearance. And if someone is in that role, then we'll assume that they have that clearance, whether or not they say it on their profile. Um, there's also things that candidates do. So in this session, we'll be covering uh, GitHub. So this is a great place where it's not actually a profile of a candidate's work experience but rather a repository of their code and their contributions. Um, on the next slide, we'll be talking a little bit about expert access uh, where you can actually search for people who have contributed to papers, patents, et cetera. Um, and then there's other candidate details uh, that we can get from you know, uh, contact information to put on top of that profile as well, um, any ATS data for those two-way integrations or uh, combining all of these uh, to not just you know, look at a profile or a resume to try and determine a candidate, but get the whole 360 view of everything that candidate has done and pull it all together into a singular profile right on Seekout. And um, again, today we'll be going over how to easily search for those candidates and we bring it all together for you. So a quick overview of our product offerings. Uh, Seekout is available in three tiers. Uh, we have our premium package, which allows access to search across 574 million public profiles globally. You have diversity sourcing, uh, machine learning search capabilities, insights, et cetera. Uh, today, we're gonna be covering the premium tech license, uh, which includes searching not only our public uh, database across the globe, but also just those candidates that have to have a GitHub profile. Um, this is gonna limit your search to just those 29.1 million developers who have a GitHub profile, and they may or may not have any other type of uh, uh, LinkedIn or social media. We have another package called Expert. Um, GitHub and public are included in this level, um, but it will also allow you to search for papers, patents, uh, conference speakers, experts in their field. Uh, we won't be covering this today, but we should be having a session about this sometime in the future. Um, so if you're interested, please let us know. Um, to kick things off, we're going to be submitting a poll to everybody. So uh, the poll question is, on a scale of one to five, how confident are you on your teams or your own ability to source technical talent currently on GitHub? So we'll go ahead and send that poll out now, and we'll be retrieving your answers and uh, going over those towards the middle or the end of the call once we get to the Q&A section. Great, and with that, we will go ahead and dive right into the platform. And if you have any questions, you can go ahead and ask them in the chat. And we have a few others on the call from the customer success team that can help 
uh, manage those. I'll pause about 30 minutes in to answer any questions that you have. So uh, when you first log into your Seekout account, you'll start at your dashboard. It gives you access to some direct searches that you've done recently, uh, AI matching, talent insights. This is just an overall view of being able to go back to where you left off your recent work for projects, see your recent sourcing activity for the week or the month, and to also see how many contact credits you have. Uh, every Seekout user will have 500 contact credits and 5,000 export credits every month. Um, and that refreshes on a certain date every single month. If you click on your initials here, uh, you'll see this uh, contact credit information um, shown on your uh, drop down from your initials. This is accessible from any page. So whether you're on dashboard, AI matching, search, insights, projects, or messaging, you'll be able to get a live view of exactly how many credits you have remaining. Um, you also have a few other cool features like switching to dark mode. I'm gonna do the session today in light mode, um, but you can toggle back and forth and see the new user interface. It's a recent update, uh, always available for help. And um, we're a dedicated team to supporting our customers. So we also offer live chat options as well. Uh, so you can help, you know, go ahead and send us a message anytime you have a question. All right, with that, we're gonna go ahead and dive right into the search capabilities. So as I mentioned on the uh, PowerPoint slide, we split it up into three different tiers. So public profiles are available to all Seekout users. Then we have our GitHub search, uh, which limits to just those candidates who have a GitHub profile. And then we have our expert license. We're gonna be covering today again, mostly just the GitHub search. Now, if you wanted to search for technical talent, you can still do so in the public search. And, and we'll show an example of that at the end of the call. Um, but uh, you'll probably notice that this first candidate has a GitHub information superimposed onto his profile. So if you don't have a tech license, you will not see this information on the public search, but this candidate has a LinkedIn profile, you would still be able to find them in public. Um, but I'm gonna show you the benefit of why it makes sense if you're a tech source or a recruiter, that you wanna go ahead and upgrade to that premium tech license and search on GitHub. All right, so on GitHub, you'll notice that the candidate pool drops significantly instead of the 574 million candidates globally across all skill sets. Uh, we're just looking at those 29.1 million candidates that have to have a GitHub profile. Um, you're gonna see that uh, uh, we can search over on the left toolbar uh, using either keywords or Boolean. And we have a variety of other filters available to go ahead and narrow down your search. And I'm gonna get into great detail on these uh, throughout the webinar today. So just as an example, let's say we were looking for an Android developer. If we go into the keyword section, we could type in Android developer. This may be one of the most basic ways to search for somebody. Um, and so as soon as we do that, we're gonna go ahead and see candidates already popping up that have Android and developer in their profile. So these keywords uh, are uh, able to be used in the keywords Boolean section. Um, this would assume an and in between these words. So it would be looking for Android and developer anywhere in the profile. You could also use Boolean. So let's say we wanted to look for Android developer or Android engineer, or maybe we could do iOS developer as well. Maybe that's you know, something we would be interested in looking at. So we could support or statements, and statements, parentheses, quotation marks. Um, and we also offer the best Boolean uh, sourcing capabilities across any sourcing platform on the market. Now if we go ahead and click on this advanced search tips, it'll guide you to our help center where you can see um, more syntax that we can use to really narrow down exactly what we're searching for. Um, if we have time at the end, I'll go ahead and get into this, but uh, we, we have other sessions dedicated towards advanced Boolean as well. All right, so that would be an example of just using keywords or Boolean in the section. Um, keep in mind that, you know, if you're gonna be searching for job titles in here, you might end up just getting those candidates who have a profile on LinkedIn or elsewhere where they put their job information. Um, if there's candidates that are just exclusively on GitHub, they may not put their work history. Uh, so I'm gonna get into 
more detail on why um, we would want to use the filters in the GitHub search to try and find the right talent. Scrolling down using the filters, we can see that we can um, sort by country. Right now we're searching globally. Um, if you look and see at uh, on the right hand side of every single one of these, you'll see a number that will give you a snapshot of how many candidates you can expect to find by clicking on any of these. Um, we have power filters, which we'll get into in a sec. Uh, coder score is exclusive to uh, seek out. So we'll actually look at all of their code on their contr contributions or repositories on GitHub and uh, assign a coder score based on how active they are, how many followers they have, et cetera. Um, but this is where I wanted to uh, touch base on the most. So uh, language expertise, we actually can filter based on languages uh, in our GitHub search. And uh, rather than searching just for job title, um, as we all know, job titles can be misleading. We'd wanna know exactly what the candidate has been working on. And uh, we pull all of these um, languages directly from GitHub so that you can search for them. So let's say, for example, for our Android developer search, um, we know that Android developers will normally use Java. Kotlin is coming up lately as a really popular programming language. And then also Objective-C. Let's say that these are the things that we're looking for for a candidate for one of our open jobs, rather than doing a you know job title, company name search. We can go ahead and put in from a drop down menu a, that has a list of known and recognized programming languages, select them. And this will look for candidates who have to have Java and Kotlin and Objective C. Now, one of the even better benefits of sourcing for tech talent on Seekout is that you can actually give a rating for a coder score for every single language here. So let's say, for example, that. Uh, this doesn't come up as often, but it's a must have requirement and we're gonna find the best of the best, the experts. So we're gonna go ahead and just bump this up to find those candidates who have five star um, Kotlin um, coder score. So now we've whittled down our candidate pool to those who have to have all three and really found just the best of the best. Um, so those who have a five out of five star rating with Kotlin, these are going to be the, the cream of the crop, those who are the absolute best at using that programming language. If we wanted to narrow down even further, we could say, I just want to look for those in the United States and we're finding those top 66 candidates in the US that have to have all three of these and uh, specifying that Kotlin, they have to be an expert. We could go ahead and uh, you know move these slider bars to whatever maybe makes more sense, uh, maybe a four star um, in Kotlin and maybe up to three star Java is gonna be acceptable, like three stars in Objective C, you can prioritize and, and state which of these are gonna be um, required for your role. So we very quickly and easily narrow down our candidate pool to just those top developers in the US that have the combination of these three programming languages without having to search for a job title. We could continue to narrow down using more of these filters, but let's go ahead and take a look at some of these profiles. So looking at David, we can see that he has the GitHub, LinkedIn. Um, if you were to find this candidate on LinkedIn, you might not know exactly what they've been working on. You can see that they're just titled software engineer. We may not um, be able to tell just from his LinkedIn that he's actually very skilled at um, you know, Kotlin, Java, and Objective-C, and, and, and may be worthwhile for reaching out to as an Android developer, even though he doesn't have that title. Um, if we'd like to go ahead and verify the uh, information um, or the work that he's done, we can go ahead and see that he has um, this Kotlin repository. So if I click here, it'll take us directly to the GitHub. Um, and these are things that you can share with your hiring manager to let them know that these are indeed experts that you're sourcing for and, uh, and provide their GitHub information to give, again, more of that 360 degree view of what the candidate's actually done and not just what they've said about their background. All right, so we've narrowed down to these three skill sets. Um, again, if we wanted to go based on specific locations, we can see that the 
cities are all listed here and we'll order them based on where the candidates are located. So we'll see that this gray little 50 here shows that there's 50 in the San Francisco Bay Area that meet all these requirements, then 24 in New York City, 24 in Seattle, et cetera, moving down. Um, but um, one of my favorite features in Seekout is actually gonna be the insights. And this is available both in public and GitHub, but uh, the GitHub insights is gonna be more tailored towards that technical talent. This um, insights is available for all of your search and it updates live as you're searching. Uh, so as soon as I click over here, you're going to see where these candidates are located, including a percentage of the pool and a number. Um, you're going to see top topics that are a bit present in these profiles that have this experience, uh, as well as other language expertise, um, repositories that are popular among these candidates, follow, how many followers they have. If you wanted to whittle down to just those ones who have over 100 followers, uh, you could do so. And Although all this data is really meaningful and helpful, the reason that it's my favorite feature in Seekout is because we can actually click on any of these and narrow down our pool just with a simple click. So let's say we just wanted to look at those eight candidates who currently work at Google. I can just click the word Google, and now my insights have updated to show the breakdown of all those um, um, Android developers that currently work at Google. You'll see the breakdown of the insights for every one of those eight candidates here. And then also the candidates themselves updated. So without having to type in any keywords or Boolean, just clicking a few buttons over here, I was able to narrow down my search to the top eight talent in the whole United States um, that currently work at Google and have experience with these technologies. So there's really no barrier to entry to technical sourcing with Seekout. I know it, you know, for me being a sourcer in the past and having to go to whatis.techtarget.com and have conversations with candidates and really educate myself on all these programming languages. Um, you can really just eliminate that barrier to entry and get your team up to speed very quickly by just um, using the tech search and clicking on these buttons here to narrow down your talent pool and then have those conversations with those candidates. Once you've actually narrowed down the candidates to what you're looking for, we can again superimpose their profile with other information. Like what we'd like to do next is go ahead and reach out and see if they're interested in our open jobs. So we can go ahead and click on the get email button. This will, you'll see it spinning for a while. As soon as you click it, that's because we're actually going out and retrieving this data live as soon as you click. So I click get email, see the spinning wheel. We're going out and we partner with five or six different contact information providers. And as soon as we click it, we'll retrieve it live and present it in order of which one we think is gonna be the most relevant. So for example, this one is shown first. Um, we're gonna assume that this is the one that we've seen and used the most recently, and it's most likely to be the correct email. Although we've provided others that have shown up, he may have created all of these. Um, if one of them doesn't work, you have options available if we're able to find multiples. And just a note on the contact credit piece. So as I mentioned, you can click here to see your live view of contact credits. I had 497 before. And even though I was able to find five email addresses for this candidate, it only costs one contact credit because it's associated with one candidate. So if one doesn't work, you have four others to go ahead and try and reach out to. In addition to finding the email, we'll also provide you with any of their websites. So it looks like Silvano's very active online and has a couple of different blogs. So you could go ahead and click and direct directly and redirect yourself over to their blogs and learn a little bit more of them. Um, if you'd like to cross-reference their information from their social media, we'll provide all the links down at the bottom as well, as soon as you get their contact info by clicking get email. So for example, for Silvano, we are able to find his LinkedIn, GitHub, Facebook, and Gravatar. And if we click on any of these, it'll take us directly to his profiles on those social media sites. Again, to give us that 360 view of the, of the candidate. And we can continue to go through and reveal the information for these candidates and um, reach out. You'll see that uh, Sam here, for example, gives even more of an example of different social media sites that we're able to cross-reference. So we were able to verify that uh, 
Sam's on AngelList, Twitter, GitHub, Vimeo, Flickr, Foursquare, LinkedIn, Keybase, About Me, Facebook, Stack Overflow, WordPress, Gravatar, Quora, YouTube, and Google Plus, and has a website. So um, if you can't <laughs> get them by email, you can try any one of these and reach out to him directly on uh, some of the social media sites that he's um, on, you know, that he may be more responsive to. And I did want to pause just in case there are any questions. Now I could keep going. Um, have any questions come up so far? One question from Dante that I can answer. Uh, Dante asks, is there a cost for candidates to create profiles on the Seagout platform? Uh, there's not, Dante. We actually, um, people don't volunteer to put their data on the Seagout platform. We just bring it from publicly available sources. They can, of course, um, request to take their data off our platform in, in accordance with you know, local regulations. But um, we just bring us data from publicly available sources. So no cost for the candidates to do that. Correct. Yep, so actually that's a great point. So if you're reaching out to these candidates, uh, we don't recommend telling the candidates that, hey, I found your profile on Seekout. They may not know what Seekout is. They didn't actively create a profile on here. What we do is we'll go out to all of these different social media sites and, um, you know, these are this is publicly available information that they've posted online, and we're just going to consolidate it into a single profile on Seekout to make it easier for recruiters and sourcers to find and reach out to these qualified candidates. Um, I usually just mention, hey, I found your profile online, and if they dig and ask me where I found their profile, I would mention one of these um, rather than saying on Seekout. Great question. All right, so let's go ahead and are there, if there's no more questions, um, let's start over a new search. So we're going to start right back at the 29.1 million. And now let's do an example of a front end developer. So again, we used to search based on titles and companies, um, but now you know, we can actually search based on language expertise, which is going to be a better indicator of them having the experience. So for common front end developer, you may be looking for candidates with HTML, JavaScript, and CSS. These are probably going to be the most common programming languages that you're going to be looking for for a front end developer. So we whittled down our pool to 820,000 candidates. Um, but I want to show you something that's uh, really interesting. Um, another one of my favorite features in sp specifically the premium tech license for sourcing GitHub candidates is we have this filter called profile type. And we could go ahead and um, narrow down our results to those who at first glance don't have any other um, social media profile except for GitHub. So right now you're going to see that some of these candidates have a GitHub. They have to have a GitHub if they're in here, but then they may also have a LinkedIn. So if you wanted to click on unmatched GitHub profiles, we're going to see that candidate pool shrink. And now we're going to see candidates who we don't see a LinkedIn profile for these candidates. If we, you know, since we partner with different contact information providers, if you click at email, we might end up finding a LinkedIn profile after the fact. Um, but um, it may have been switched to private uh, recently and, and, and won't show up if you try and search. Um, but then, for example, like Vitor, um, we're only seeing his contributions and we're saying that he has JavaScript, HTML, and CSS, but we don't know where he works and we don't know what his job title is. But this is absolutely someone for uh, we'd want to reach out to for our front end developer role. So uh, we do have this button here to narrow down our search just to those in our first run through to say, let's go ahead and look for just those candidates on GitHub that weren't matched with LinkedIn or otherwise. And then once we've gone through this talent pool, we can go ahead and open it up to those that may, we may be able to cross reference on other platforms as well. So this is an immediate impact um that you can make on your organization for hiring tech talent to get those candidates that you couldn't find uh, otherwise and in the past three weeks we just learned that um github has actually blocked x-ray sourcing into their platform so if you used to be a boolean wizard 
x-ray searching and GitHub, um, it's become increasingly more difficult, but uh, good news for all of you as uh, you know, seek out customers or potential seek out customers, adding on this GitHub uh, premium tech license, um, you'll be able to still search and find the great GitHub talent. All right. Um, in addition to these filters that are shown here, like location, company, title, um, we also are able to sort by diversity. And so this is one of the reasons that a lot of customers will end up going with SeekOut is we have the best diversity uh, uh, search filters in the, in the industry. So let's say we wanted to bump this up and just find those JavaScript for star JavaScript developers. And um, instead of just opening it up to everybody, we wanted to help improve our diversity hiring. So we could simply click on the diversity tag and let's say we're gonna try and improve our uh, female tech talent um, hiring initiative um, as many organizations are doing now, which is great. And uh, we just make it a lot easier. So um, I can click on these different programming languages, say I'm looking for female candidates and we're gonna go ahead and uh, look at things like maybe first names, um, uh, associations, uh, pronouns used in the profile. Um, we have a whole um, very complicated uh, system where we'll try and determine and infer uh, the diversity type of these candidates. Now it's not perfect, it's about a 90% confidence rating. Um, so if you're seeing one in 10 candidates that don't match the diversity type, it's by design. If we were too restrictive, we might end up eliminating candidates that would have been a fit. So um, as we go through here, you'll see that uh, it's, it's very accurate. Um, but uh, again, if you're finding candidates that don't match, it's, um, it's by design. Uh, so we don't end up eliminating candidates who would, who would fit that category. Um, if we were to select multiple diversity tags, so for example, if I were to say I'm looking for female um, and Hispanic, then if I click on both of these, there's a toggle here that says uh, candidates with both tags. So I could toggle back and forth and actually all of these filters have a, a lot of customization available. It's where you can say I'm looking for female and Hispanic, or I can toggle back and say they can either be likely to be female or likely to be Hispanic, and it's either or. Um, so you'll notice that these little um, slider bars that go left and right can allow you to include or exclude certain experience or convert from an and or, or statement for these. So very highly customizable for all of these different filters. Um, if you're not seeing the filter that you want in this default list, we have a view all filters button at the very bottom of the page where you can see um, a wide variety of more filters available to search by. So for example, past company, past title aren't included, but if I click it, it'll be added to my list and I can actually reorder these. So maybe I wanna move state up higher to you know country and location. I wanna put these all together, like city, location would be city, then state, then country. Um, I can reorder these that anytime I log in. So even if I close my browser, you know, log in the next day, this I can reorder these to um, customize to how I'd like to start my sourcing for the day. Just go ahead and click save and you'll see past company was added and my location, state and country filters have been moved to the top to make it easier for me to sort by that field. All right, any questions now? I think I can see the chat. Um, okay, so I wanted to show another example and then that'll probably take about 15 minutes then we can open it up to Q&A uh, officially. Um, I wanted to go over power filters a little bit. So let's start the search from scratch. And let's say we're looking now for a back-end developer. We've already tried front-end um, and we've already done Android. So now 
looking for a backend developer. And you'll notice that as soon as I do what I would normally do in the past, which is look for titles, I typed in backend, um, you're gonna see a suggestion pop up that says use a power filter. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and click this and I'll explain what this is. So I just clicked backend as a power filter. We've actually created, and this is available for all of our customers, um, pre-built searches on the back end of our, of our platform. So um, without having to type in, again, any keywords or Boolean, um, I just added a, a power filter specifically geared around back end. And if you hover over these little I information symbols, uh, it'll give you a brief explanation of, of what we're doing in the background. So we're looking for candidates who have experience or expertise with server cloud technologies and programming languages, specifically on the back end. And again, without having to type in anything or pick the languages, we're going to know what's popular among backend developers. So if you uh, find it easier to use a power filter rather than building your own string, again, low barrier to entry for entry level recruiters and sourcers uh, to come in and use our power filters rather than educating themselves and all the, so like for backend, for example, you may be looking for Java, PHP, Ruby on Rails, Python. If I just click backend, then we can go ahead and, you know, use this as our foundation and then build on that. So we have a basic backend filter and then I will go to, I know I just reordered it, programming languages, here we go. Now we're wanting uh, Ruby. So we wanna find an expert in Ruby another rare skill set, um, maybe four or five stars on Ruby. And we're going to find 26,000 candidates we may have never otherwise found if we didn't have the premium tech license. And then we can either narrow down the search by location, state, country, or again, I prefer going to insights. I would recommend doing this for every one of your searches and see the full breakdown before um, narrowed, narrowing, narrowing down my search. Um, another uh, really uh, exciting feature is the ability to export these insights. So I just said I'm looking for, again, backend as a power filter and Ruby. And uh, although I have the insights here, I may want to use this as part of my intake or download meeting with the hiring manager to be more of a talent advisor and to share what's available in the market before I even start recruiting on the role. So for example, we can see the breakdown um, just with a few clicks, build out this very powerful Excel document that's shareable and show exactly where the talent is located by city or country, um, topics, language expertise, even the diversity breakdown for these candidates. Um, we can you know, target these uh, more diverse pipelines of talent before uh, reaching out to the greater public, finding out what their majors are, the degrees, what schools they've attended, um, where are their current companies. So we can see that most of these backend developers that have Ruby are gonna be at Red Hat, then Google, then mostly self-employed, GitHub, et cetera. So bringing data like this is really important for building out your search strategy. And uh, you know there may be some companies that you may have never thought of to source from and they're gonna be present on this list. You may not have known that uh, ThoughtWorks would be a great company that has exactly the amount of candidates as Salesforce does um, for Ruby developers on the back end. So, then we can go over here and say, like, I just want to look in the United States, update the insights for US, update the candidate pool there. And then we can look for those who maybe work at Red Hat, for example. We're going to see most of those, probably the Red Hat headquarters is in Raleigh or one of their offices where all their developers are located and uh, we'll be able to see the 138 candidates that we've narrowed down to just by making a few clicks. Again, haven't really touched any Boolean, just using the power of um, the filters that SeekOut provides.
All right, I think now would be a good time for me to go ahead and uh, check the Q&A in the chat and see if there's any questions that I can answer. Yeah, want me to, want me to read them to you, Mike? Sure. So uh, Dante, first question, uh, what is the main difference between the regular platform and GitHub? And then is it possible to add diversity tags? Or excuse me, is it possible to add other diversity tags? Um, yes, so the difference between um, the regular platform, so on public profiles, if you only have a, a premium license, then you won't get this GitHub information on their profile. And you also won't be able to uh, narrow down your search to just those who are who don't have any other type of profile. So this profile type unmatched, where we're only finding exclusive GitHub profiles, uh, you wouldn't be able to do that in the public search. So you could still uh, source for technical talent, but just not those exclusively on GitHub. Um, we do have a wide variety of diversity tags available. Um, and we're still working on adding more to GitHub, but uh, we're going to have female, Hispanic, Black or African American, Asian, veteran, and then we also have some beta ones that are in the works right now um, to continue to uh, improve and, and increase the diversity tags on this list. Um, in the GitHub search, we're still working on um, adding more of these to be available within the GitHub diversity tags. Next question, Mike, uh, can the tech and GitHub be applied to manufacturing not software, for example, like engineers, quality process, electrical maintenance? Great question. So GitHub is a is a site that's just for software developers. So it's going to be exclusive to those who have experience in example, JavaScript, PHP. Um, it's not for those other engineers who may be like mechanical or electrical. This is really going to be for those computer science, um, you know, coding type uh, uh, jobs. So if we go in to you know, see like what candidates are contributing to, um, this is all gonna be uh, code in here. And um, it's not re related at all to you know, any other type of engineer. For those types of roles, um, you can absolutely go into the public profiles and search for electrical, mechanical, uh, whatever other types of engineers that you'd like. But, but GitHub is for just software development. And one other thing is that we're actually going to be adding on Stack Overflow Search um, in the near future. So this is going to continue to improve and enhance, and we'll probably bump up this uh, number even more. We recently added significantly more candidates, both to our uh, GitHub and also our diversity filters. But um, we're going to be adding in a lot more data in the near future. So stay tuned for that. A couple more questions, Mike. Uh, how do we get the co coder score filter? I went into view all filters, but I can't see that option. Sure, it, it should be available by default. And so if you're in GitHub search here, make sure you're in GitHub search first and not public, it's not available in public, um, then you should see Git coder score um, as a default um, here or language expertise. Um, let me go ahead and I will reset to the default view so we can see it live. All right, so by default, um, power filter show first and then coder score show second and then language expertise. Um, if you can't find a filter, the best option is to just go ahead and use the search bar at the top. And just by typing slowly, um, you'll see that it'll show up. And if you're still having trouble finding it, that would be a good chance to go ahead and go into the live chat. Um, send us a screenshot, share a message, and uh, we'll get back to you usually under five minutes. Uh, next question, uh, and last one I have on deck here, does Seekout have an option where we can filter our candidates with certain job titles? Yes, absolutely. Um, we can do so uh, in both. We can do it in um, the current title section here. And we could say we're looking for, you know, again, like we were doing for our first example, we're looking for an Android developer. Now keep in mind, um, the reason why I recommend when you're in GitHub search to look for languages is you may be eliminating those candidates who, who don't have a LinkedIn profile if you're looking for titles. These candidates who have a GitHub profile probably aren't putting their work history on their profile. So if you do narrow down by title, you'd be eliminating candidates who may have the languages but didn't put their title on their profile. Um, 
And if you'd like to uh, exclude certain candidates based on their titles, again, we have this toggle. So let's say, for your example, you'd like to exclude those with manager in their title. You could go ahead and put manager and exclude. And that will exclude any, any candidates with that, uh, with that title. Um, these, these, this current title filter is also available in the, in the public profile search. So um, it, it's available in both. So you can do it in public profiles as well. Um, since we have questions around it, the advanced Boolean filters would be great for this sort of stuff. So if we click on this, um, again, the advanced search tips button, we could look for things like uh, current title and only search in the current title fields. So for example, um, you had manager or director or et cetera. You could search for these um, or you could even make it into a uh, not statement and eliminate those as well. So if you're familiar with Boolean or if you would like to learn more, um, you can go to our help center. Um, and we give a basic explanation of basic Boolean. Um, so if you're not familiar, you can learn very quickly and easily. It's not too complicated uh, how to do it. Or if you're an expert, then you can go ahead and look at some of our advanced syntax and how to use them. Again, feel free to uh, chat if you need some help with these. Or we even have even more advanced searching and seek out where you'll be able to do even more advanced things like the tilde and the wildcard symbol and things like that. So if you're interested, I highly recommend these are great uh, reads for those who uh, like to use Boolean like myself.